Okay, check it out. Intel has released the new crazy expensive $500 plus eight core CPUs, the 9900K and the 9700K, which is eight cores, eight threads. So eight cores, 16 threads, and the 9700K is eight cores, eight threads. So there you go. The only slightly less insanely expensive eight core, eight thread CPU, but what do you need to really use them? What's the most top end motherboard ever? Hint. Okay. We've got some coverage of the state of the art things that are coming from Intel in another video or the things that have come from Intel in another video. And so you should probably watch that if you're curious about the 9900K and who that's for and eight cores for a gamer. Well, no, eight cores is not really for a gamer. The 8700K launched just a year ago, a six core monster and the undisputed king of high frame rate gaming. And there's an argument to be made that, you know, for gaming, six cores, eight cores, I mean, 8700K is fine. So while not the fastest, there are also alternative options, which uh, are on the market that would deliver nearly as good of performance, but at like half the price. It's a story for another day. Well, you know, who on earth is the yet more expensive eight core CPU aimed at? And that's kind of sort of, I mean, you, you, it's not really the subject of this video. We really want to talk about the Z390 Aorus Master, but I kind of, I mean, you kind of got to got to get into it a little bit. I mean, it's the fastest desktop CPU that there is, the 9900K, it really is. Uh, we've reached the end of the lifetime of socket 1151. This CPU is finally faster than the rest of everything else in the system. And boy, howdy, does it drink the power. First six cores and now eight cores, we finally have a leap forward from Sandy Bridge. You know, four cores, four cores, seven, eight, nine years ago. Finally, six and eight cores are starting to become mainstream from all the major desktop CPU manufacturers. Gigabyte has done something unique in their entire Aorus line. Uh, and I really wanna, wanna draw attention to that. This is really high-end Z390 Aorus Master motherboard, but there's a higher-end motherboard and there are also lower-end versions of the motherboard in the Aorus line that are priced more competitively, priced lower, but they're still really premium motherboards. The fact is that the power delivery circuit is essentially the same in the entire Aorus line for the Z390, but that's good for you. Uh, what's different, it really is the cooling solution. I mean, there's a little bit of a difference. This is a 12 plus two phase and we're, you know, we're, if we're talking about the Pro, it's a 12 plus one. They swap some of the brains of the components around. But if we're talking about five gigahertz, that's more about power delivery than chip quality with the 9700K and the 9900K, at least for five gigahertz. I mean, 5.1, 5.2, 5.3, it's a bathtub curve. Those clock speeds are gonna drink the power and it's completely insane. The other thing you have to keep in mind is that Motherboard manufacturers, all of them, test thousands of CPUs, and they set the default voltage profiles for the worst of the CPUs. So odds are you've got a better CPU than the worst CPUs. So just about any board in the Aura stack, if your CPU can do five gigahertz, these boards can deliver everything that you need for five gigahertz on all eight of those cores. But if you're gonna push up to 5.1, 5.2, 5.3 gigahertz, well, I mean, that level of power, you're gonna need probably a more extreme motherboard, or at least a motherboard with, with better cooling, like true Finstack VRM cooling and heat pipe cooling for the VRM, all sorts of other stuff like that. And this, this is the pinnacle of that. Well, I'll, well, I guess actually the Aorus Extreme would be the pinnacle if you want 10 gig of Quantia Ethernet and all that kind of stuff. But this is the Z390 Aorus Master. So the heat pipe connecting the power delivery circuitry on both the top and bottom of the motherboard so that all the components, all the VRM components of the motherboard uh, that make heat other than the CPU, that heat is managed and that heat is carried to the top of the board for those fin stack heat sinks and there's more airflow. So when you are doing 5.2 or 5.3 gigahertz, you've got the power delivery system on this motherboard enable in, in order to be able to do it. 5.2 gigahertz, 24 hour stable on the 9900K is what I was able to achieve. This is a retail 9900K because I don't, it's, it's, it's it, well, that's a story for another time. In addition, the motherboard PCB has more copper than ever and a revised power delivery plane. There's actually so much copper here that the copper will act kind of like a heat sink or so they tell me, but you know, it's not just about power delivery on the motherboard. Although most of the clock speed, like overclocking and doing your stuff on the 9900K is gonna have to do with power delivery. 
So this motherboard has built-in Intel Gigabit Wi-Fi and CNVI. Uh, that's uh, the USB, or that's got the like the USB combo, not really a PCI Express interface. Uh, and it also supports insanely overclocked memory. So we tested the G-Skill Trident Z DDR4 4000 for stability, and it was rock solid. Between the overclock and moving from six to eight cores, you know, the faster memory uh, operations do actually help. Like being able to run your memory at 45 gigabytes per second to keep those eight CPUs fed uh, kind of matters a little bit more when you're talking about eight cores versus four cores. I mean, forever. It was the case that memory faster than 2666 on Intel really didn't make much of a difference. And now we're talking about eight cores and whether it's eight cores, eight threads on the 9700K or eight cores, 16 threads on the 9900K, it's about keeping that CPU fed. But let's talk about the PCI Express slots and the PCIe layout on this board. There are three by 16 slots that are on this board. Two are wired to the CPU for by 16 by zero operation or by eight by eight. And the other one is through the chipset, so that's gonna be a by four, but it does share resources with other stuff on the motherboard, so you gotta check the manual depending on the combination of peripherals that you're using. Now, unfortunately for us sort of virtualization aficionados, virtualization freaks, whatever you wanna call it, Z390 is crippled in one important way, at least right now, at least every motherboard that I've tested, and that is all of the devices attached to PCI Express lanes, whether it's a by eight by eight configuration as we have on the Z390 Aorus Master, or whether it's a by eight by four by four as we see on some other motherboards, all of those peripherals are in one IOMU group. So if you wanted to do a dual GPU pass through situation, it's not gonna work. Uh, it will work if you use the onboard iGPU plus an add-in card, the two add-in cards. It's uh, anything that's attached to the CPU PCI Express lines is in one IOMMU group. It's unfortunate, but that's how it is on Z390. I expect the X299 and the 9900X processor, the, the you know, socket 2011 uh, or, to, not to, or 2066, the socket 2066 version of that CPU to be uh, a little better in that regard, but we'll see. Now Gigabyte has also gone to the trouble of testing and labeling the temperature sensors that show up from the, the, the platform controller thingy on this motherboard for uh, software like Hardware Info. So when you wanna run Hardware Info and you've got all the list of temperature probes, Gigabyte has now provided a map of where those temperature sensors go and, uh, you know, and easily figure out which temperature sensor is reporting what temperature and physically where that is. I mean, I'm not sure why I didn't think of doing that myself in my motherboard reviews. So maybe that's something that I should do. So yeah, I mean, it's like, it's like a, oh yeah, duh, we should probably do that. At the rear I.O. we have a power button and a clear CMOS button. It might be nice if the clear CMOS button were a little bit more recessed, honestly. We've got our antenna connection. That's for our CNVI 2x2 802.11 wireless solution. We've got four USB 2.0 ports, two USB 2 DAC up ports, which have options in the BIOS for slightly increasing the voltage, which will help with stability issues. Like the Focusrite I2i, if you boost the voltage by 0.1 volts, it turns from not exactly stable to a lot more stable. Got HDMI out for the integrated iGPU if you're gonna run multi-monitor. Then we've got four USB 3.0, you know, Gen 2, 10 gigabit, whatever. One type A, one type C, and then two more underneath the Ethernet adapter. The Ethernet adapter is an Intel Ethernet adapter. It's the one that's built into the, you know, nine series CPU. And then we've got our ESS Saber. You know, it's a Realtek 1220 codec, but it's got the ESS Saber codec, uh, audio uh, amplifier and stuff like that. It has optical SPDIF and gold-plated I.O. One last note, the PCIe slot layout on this motherboard is ideal for running SLI if SLI is your thing. Now, I personally think SLI is going away of the dinosaur. It's not really practical anymore, but you can run dual triple slot cards. So one other cool feature of this board is that it offers USB charging from the front panel. Gigabyte offers utility software for quick charge that will enable you to do Android quick charge or Apple, even Apple quick charge through the USB ports up to 18 watts. Now it doesn't auto detect Apple or Android, you gotta set it in the software, but once you set it, it does remember. I'll also mention really quickly that Gigabyte software RGB bundle now integrates RGB sync across motherboard, GPU, and other devices like the keyboard. So, you know, again, I've got a retail 9900K, and so far, this board is the only board that I've been able to make overnight stable at 5.2 gigahertz and only 1.27 volts. So that's with my retail CPU. That's a Cinebench score of about 2305. 
and uh, 46760 thereabouts megabytes per second as reported by ADA64 for memory read speeds. So, you know, if you want something that's even more overkill, maybe you want a Quantia 10 gig ethernet, uh, an ethernet interface, maybe you want a, something higher end like that. Well, Z390 Aorus Extreme would be something that you should look at, but maybe this is overkill. Maybe you want to drop down to the Pro, you can totally do that. That'll change the 12 plus two VRM configuration to a 12 plus one but that's still plenty enough for your, you know, your 5.2 gigahertz overclock. Gigabyte really is doing something special with their motherboard stack and their video card stack by sort of simplifying the features. It's, you know, you know in, in past is like a, is a gaming six better than like the gaming something else that's kind of a similar model, which one's actually better. You can actually choose the motherboard now on the features that you want and know that the VRM power delivery, at least for the 9000 series CPUs, it's all there to support five gigahertz, you know, basically across the board. I'd still recommend the Aorus boards sort of at the higher end of the stack like this, especially if you're gonna shell out over $500 for an eight core 9900K CPU, but the stability the stability and, and cool operation sort of speak for itself. But really, unless you're a content creator, and doing gaming and streaming, you know, the whole nine yards. Uh, this is this is honestly, this is overkill. This whole setup is really overkill. I mean, I love eight cores for Linux though, and VMs, and, and so maybe in that scenario, it makes sense, especially if you're gonna, gonna earn a little bit of money and do some stuff like that, but you're not, you know, you're not totally earning your salary, but you're making good hobby money, you know, maybe something like that. For an 8700K, uh, or an 8700K with a D-lid on this motherboard at 5.3 gigahertz or higher, this motherboard is probably overkill in terms of power delivery for that six core 8700K part. So you can maybe save a few bucks and move down the Aura stack for another motherboard. But I will tell you the 9900K, 95 watt TDP, that's lies, that is all lies. Uh, you're looking at more like 150 watts plus, especially if you're gonna do that 5.0, 5.1 gigahertz. Honestly, I think everybody with a 9900K, unless you're like one in a thousand unlucky person, five gigahertz on all cores is basically gonna be rock solid with the CPU as long as you're managing the heat with good cooling. Really, the most disappointing thing about the whole Z390 9000 series CPU launch is that the CPU is so darn fast, but I can't run by 16 graphics and M.2 RAID at the same time. There's just not enough PCI Express connectivity. I'm gonna have to wait to the 9900X on the X299 platform in order to do that. The other thing that really sucks is availability. Uh, it's not because the CPUs are super popular, I think. I think it's because there's just not enough manufacturing capacity to go around. And so that's that's driving the prices of these CPUs up even a little bit more. So, you know, if you're impatient, there is some other stuff on the market you could check out, but it is the fastest single core speed. And this is, you know, computationally the fastest eight core desktop CPU, but it will cost. So keep that in mind. I'm Wendell. This has been a Level 1 Text motherboard review video. I'm signing out, and uh, you can find me in the Level 1 Text forums. So see you there. Take some pictures. Do a build.